Now, I wasn't going to talk about LeBron breaking Kareem's record originally, as it seemed like there was really no reason to make a video about it. That is, until the significance surrounding the number 38 began to surface. That's what intrigued me. Following the game, many people immediately started to connect the dots, and what was discovered is truly mind-blowing. LeBron was 38 years old when he broke Kareem's record of 38,387 points by getting to the 38,388 point mark, in which 38 happens to appear twice in that number, and he did so by scoring 38 points, and it was on the 38th day of the calendar year, 2723, his career average for points per game, 27.23. Now you might think the eerie coincidences end there, but that couldn't be farther from the case. For those who don't know, the NBA was founded in 1946. Now ask yourself, how many years separate 1946, again the year the league was founded, from 1984, which was when Kareem became the all-time scoring leader? If you did the math correctly, I'm pretty sure at this point the answer shouldn't surprise you. Kareem broke Wilt Chamberlain's record in the NBA's 38th season. And from that moment, once Kareem did that, guess what? LeBron was born 38 weeks later. That's right, not only was LeBron born the same year Kareem became the all-time scoring leader, he was literally born 30 weeks after Kareem broke the record. You can't make this up. At first, I didn't believe it, but it looks like it actually checks out. Sticking with the day Kareem broke Wilt's record, I want you to take a wild guess how much time passed between Kareem's record-breaking night and LeBron's record-breaking night. The answer is exactly 38 years and 308 days, once again keeping the theme alive. I know you probably thought that Kareem became the all-time scoring leader 39 years ago, with it being 2023 and all, but technically it's been about 38 years and 10 months because it's not quite April yet, meaning that Kareem technically held the record for 38 years. Man, can things get any more crazy? Well, yes, it does get crazier. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find footage of the entire game, but people are saying that they saw LeBron check out of the game for the final time with 38 seconds remaining. I believe the game was still pretty close, but I guess he had no other choice but to leave the game at that point in time to keep the ritual going. Fast forward two days later, the Lakers played the Milwaukee Bucks in their very next game following LeBron's historic night. And get this, the Bucks would go on to get their 38th win of the season, with Giannis dropping 38 points. Just let that sink in. The team that drafted Kareem got their 38th win of this season against none other than the Lakers. And again, it took their star player scoring 38 points to do it. Here's another crazy fact that just might blow your mind. LeBron won his first ring against the Oklahoma City Thunder back in 2012, then would eventually go on to break Kareem's record versus that same franchise. Franchise. But that's not all. Guess how many days went by from the time LeBron won his first title, which was on June 21st, 2012, all the way to the night he broke Kareem's record on February 7th, 2023. 3,883 days. Can you believe LeBron broke Kareem's record against the Thunder 3,883 days after winning his first championship against none other than the Thunder? This is seriously starting to freak me out. But if all that didn't freak you out, maybe this will be the cherry on top. I thought all the creepy coincidences were over until I experienced one myself in real life. Over the past several weeks, everyone was speculating on which day was going to be the exact day LeBron would accomplish this legendary feat. But what if I told you that the day LeBron passed Kareem was already written in stone 28 years ago to the date? Due to the fact that his long-standing record was soon to be surpassed, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's name was being brought up constantly in the sports media, and as a result, it had everybody reflecting on the great career he had. But for me, I always think of something completely different when the captain is mentioned. Growing up, I would basically spend every night watching reruns of old sitcoms on Nick at Night, and one of my favorite shows then was Full House. Now, you may be asking yourself, what the hell does Full House have anything to do with this? So allow me to explain. You see, in Season 8, Episode 16, titled Air Jesse, the one and only Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Bar made a special cameo in which he played a referee for a charity basketball game. He's the all-time leading scorer in the NBA, was voted most valuable player six times, and is considered one of the greatest players in the history of basketball. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Kareem Abdul-Jabbar! So basically, the other day, I decided to watch this episode for old time's sake. And when DJ introduced Kareem as the all-time leading scorer in NBA history, it got me thinking, when exactly did this episode come out? You know, just out of curiosity. And the answer I got after searching it online sent shivers down my spine. The date that this particular episode aired on just so happened to be on February 7th, 1995. And if that date sounds familiar to you, then you know exactly where I'm going with this. And what could possibly be one of the craziest coincidences, LeBron James finally passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the all-time scoring list on February 7th, 2023. The exact month and day that this Full House episode premiered on 28 years ago. So you mean to tell me Kareem randomly appeared in an episode of Full House of all shows with DJ bringing up his scoring record in an episode that aired on February 7th of that year? It was almost like it was meant to be. Now this might not give you goosebumps, but I want you to put yourself in my shoes coming across this information. This has to be some sort of sick joke at this point.